after we just installed our RDI unit and started filling the tank. Now that the tank is filled and the pump is running, we can start getting to the good stuff like our new Apex controller. Today, we wanted to simply show you how easy it is to set up an Apex. For now, we'll simply affix everything to a wall for demonstration purposes, but you can get very creative and custom with your installation of the system and your wire management. First, we will mount our hardware in a safe place away from water. Having a nearby network is also a plus. The first thing we want to do is mount the Apex Energy Bar 8 and the Apex Base Unit. Next, we install the lab grade pH probe then the temperature probe, and last but not least, the aqua controller. Then you will simply log into Fusion and begin programming your equipment to your liking, such as lighting, pumps, etc. The Apex comes with a getting started guide and it will walk you through all of these steps plus more. Like helping you get your Apex on your home network and helping you set up and use their cloud-based Apex Fusion interface. Programming can be done directly from the display, but having it connected to your local network makes that go so much faster using the new Fusion interface. Apex Fusion is a cloud-based software that gives you access to your Apex system from anywhere. There are also apps for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. You can also go to softsupply.com forward slash Apex to download a comprehensive reference manual. Well guys, that's it for today. I told you it would be short and sweet, but stay tuned as we hook up more equipment and continue with this build. Hello YouTube and welcome to Black Gold the Goldfish Adventure. This video is about how I set up my new tank. As I told you in one of the other videos, I switched out my 180 liter for a 325 liter tank. Uh, I needed more space for my fancy goldfish. So here is the tank. Uh, this is a few days after I got it. We did clean out some of the mess in the tank. We cut out some of the excess silicone. You can see here there's a lot of silicone uh, around the edges here. Uh, after we cleaned it out, you know, removed the excess silicone, we did fill it the entire way up to see if it hold, still would hold water. I did. This is a used tank. It's not the prettiest tank. It was quite dirty, so we did clean it out a lot. Uh, did you know a lot of work on it just to get it up and running. So I wanted to try something new. Uh, so I decided to get some acrylic paint. This is matte black acrylic paint. Uh, 
and decided to do the back and the bottom of the tank. So this is from the first layer of paint. So yeah, this is just from the bottom of the aquarium where I also painted it with this acrylic matte black. I wanted it to be really black, so I gave it three rounds of paint. Let it dry, give it a new, let it dry, give it another round. So this is from the second or third round. And after it dried off, put it right, and here you can see the tank after it's painted. You get a big old picture of me there in the glare. So this is how the tank looks now. And just to give you a view of what it looks like with water in it, here we are, you can see how the two aquariums are the same height. Had a bit of a problem with that. The fish here on the right are all set. We got the two legs. And, well, there's only one thing left. Adding the pandas from their holding tank. So, here's Amy just adding the fish. Uh, the water is all brand new. Of course, I have some conditioner in it, so there's a lot of air bubbles in it. I'll show you in a bit without all the air bubbles. So, here we have the pandas getting into the new tank. They were in a 140 liter holding tank, just a big plastic box. I added my new filter um, uh, with my sponge filter just to have it up and running. So when I got the new tank up and running, as I have now, the filter was ready to be used. So I just could plug it in. So I'm, I'm taking them a few at a time in this big old plastic box here, uh, taking them out of the water, putting them into the new tank. Um, just, oh, they look so tiny in this big tank now. Just, oh, looking good. I really like the black in the background in the bottom. Just see the difference from the one on the right, which doesn't have any paint. Uh, just, oh, the, the whiteness of the fish really pops in my own view. Here are some of the last pandas getting out in the tank, looking good. They are going to really enjoy this tank with a lot of space. As I said, it's a 325 liter tank. And if you do the math, it fits with how many fish you can have in the tank. There's seven in here, so you can have seven and a half, I think it is, if you do the math, probably. And just to show you afterwards, I got a, a bit of decorations, a few plants in there. I got my snails back in, removed all the air bubbles out of it, and fed the fish. Um, the light runs on a timer, that's why it's all dark here. So yeah, you can just see here's Theodore getting some some food, enjoying himself in the new tank. So I'm very, very happy with my new tank. It's a bit old tank, but it's you don't see it that clearly. So still looks really good, and the fish have a lot of room. So that's how I set up my new tank. Thanks for watching. Please uh, stop by to see more.
This is P6 bringing you an update. Um, tank is crystal clear. Just fed them so some stuff at the bottom here, pellets crumbled up and shrimp. But my two PRs are doing good. Doing pretty well. Going. See you going. My Volpinos. African Tiger. Everybody's doing great. New edition, uh, North American Carp. I uh, adopted this guy from one of my uh, one of my uncles has a pond, and they were a little too much in there, so I took one guy to take one off of his hands. But um, yeah, pretty nice fish actually. Cleans up a lot. My Motoro and a big surprise. Second model of Stingray. This is a little pup. Not pup, but he's small, he's thin. You can see his bone right there sticking out. But I'm trying to feed him. He's rejecting all the food, but uh, he should get on the food soon. But yeah. And she's getting big. Getting nice and fat. And my tire track eel and my two larpa dies and my Adama, Adonis Fleco and my Bulgarina Lashtrakiga Strike Pike. This tank is new. I took the fish from 75. My or from the 90, I don't know. Um, my barracudas, I won it, and the two sharks. I lost my albino clown loach due to this guy. He ripped him apart. But yeah, all these fish in here for sale, you can see, except all the plecos. But otherwise, all the fish in here are for sale. Pike sickles, two pike sickles, and red devil, four and cat, and then ground. And these fish here are for sale too. <laughs> Jack Dempsey, red big suit. Sorry about the water quality, just did a water change. And red tail cat, a huge Oscar, and another pike cichlid. My 90 gallon started leaking, so that's empty, it's drained, it's dry. I'm gonna try to reseal that. My Asian reptile is doing the same, not knowing if he's eating, but yeah, let's hope he is eating, although he would have been dead already. Probably didn't watch as you did, guys. So, all these guys, these guys are going pretty fast. They're so pretty fast. Yeah, if you're interested, five dollars a piece. Some big ones in there. Most of them are big. The bottom, the ones at the bottom were small, but the ones here, this guy right here, it's pretty big, pretty big. But um, one of the flower ones doing good. Getting some nice colors on him. See if he will come out. So food in. No. Shy guy though. But yeah, he's doing good. Ah, look at that nice purple on the Bulgarina. Put a purple light up there. Dovi, they lay the eggs, they, the babies actually they did hatch. But uh, she ate them after a couple of days. She's here hiding here. Switch some stuff around to make them feel more secure through the breeding. Put some more stuff in here. And the meal is behind the pot. See you here. But um, I hope they never breed again. Flower horns left with some of them still. Get that some really dirty. They're for sale too, five dollars a piece. I have 20 left. And then it's done. This time it's empty. Just trimming some trimming I have left over. Mm -hmm. But uh, after just. Tank is trimmed. I 
sure Gage will use corner here, this corner here, and the corner over here. Um, I did get some frog bit from a follower on Instagram. I won a contest. So, um, if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure to follow me on Instagram. Monster66 is my name. And, um, yeah. This guy's out of there, man. Um, got some swords coming out of the ground here, growing pretty nicely. I just churned out a, a sprout from them, so I got some there. Achilles over there, they're doing good. Um, these are my carpet plants. Not pretty carpet, but they're they're growing good, doing well. And I have. Tiger Lotus going great, coming up pretty far. My bulb doing great. And this plant here, I've noticed a little bit, a big bunch in the back. Doing great, keep turning them off a little bit and planting it in the other tank. My male diamond tetra. I think I have two males. I have three males and the rest is females. How you can tell that is the males have the here, this is a female, low color on her fins, and the males have the milkish color on their fins. So there's two males right there. Um, my discus is doing good. Chilling here. Got some dead plants and dead leaves. Algae eaters. My one crybins is left, and um, my two prong and looking tetras. But yeah, quick update, everything's doing great. Getting rid of some stuff, getting a new tank soon. And uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. And see you guys next time. Hey folks, Nick Mock 007 here again. And I know there are some rumors going around that science left me. Well, the truth is I'm giving science the weekend off. So I'll have two more low key videos out this week. Now, starting today with the mythical tank update that I've been promising. But don't worry, Science is just spending the weekend with some of her old college roommates. We're not having any problems. She'll be back next weekend. But the nights sure are getting lonely around here in the meantime. So I've been promising this tank update for a long time. I'm going to try not to talk over this whole thing, but I'll tell you a bit about my tank, my plant choices, and point out some changes. Um, oh, and I threw in some outtakes at the end of this, so stick around if for no other reason than to laugh at my feeble acting attempts. Now, here is your chance to skip to the various points throughout the video, so all you April fans get to clicking. Right, so back in February, I had some stuff floating over on the left side, but otherwise, in this shot, you can see the basic layout. For the plants, I'm using Hygro Compact, uh, Marsalea Minuta, Amania SP Bonsai, Blixo Japonica, um, a bit of Downoy, um, some green gecko crypts. Uh, for the moss, uh, it's a peacock moss. Got some S repins, uh, some Rotala rotundifolia, Ludwigia cuba. Uh, the big grassy plant is the Cypress helferi. And the back right hand corner is the Pogo stamen stellatus broadleaf. Um, some Ludwigia on the left hand side. Um, and Alternathera reinecki mixed in with it. Uh, both of those give a little bit of red contrast to the tank. Now, I've been having a snail problem. Um, they've been chewing on my plants quite a bit, but 
In April, I did end up picking, a hand, uh, picking up a handful of assassin snails, and so far I'm starting to see fewer and fewer snails, so hopefully the plants will start to look a little bit less beaten up here in the next few weeks. I said science was out of town this weekend so uh, what better way to prevent wet sleeves than a little bit of aquascaping in the buff. This was after a major trimming to the tank. Um, I pulled a ton of things out. I thinned out, replanted a lot of plants, and rehomed uh, quite a few others. I ended up selling the crowns of Downoy. It's a really cool plant, just wasn't working with my scape. And those scripts went out to Cam. As I mentioned, snails have been chewing on my plants, so cue the assassins. 
Uh, just home from the LFS with another plant I've been wanting to try, uh, a little bit of Amania gracilis. And some shots from the top. Uh, this was before the trimming, and quite frankly, this is how you know when a major trimming is overdue. With this most recent update, I really did a heavy trimming of everything. I packed back the Rotala um, and I trimmed it up all evenly because I was too lazy to stagger the cuts to make it look a little bit more natural. Um, also, I pulled out the Ludwigia and um, I'm in the process of propagating the Alternothera Reineki. Um, I like the look of that plant a little bit better for this layout, um, so I think I'm going to stick with that for the reds. I also really thinned out the Blixa, cut back the Marsalea. Uh, and unfortunately the pogo stamen, uh, one of my favorite plants in this tank, it actually wasn't growing very well for me. So uh, I'm actually replacing that with the Amania gracilis from before, so we'll see how that one does for me. And here are some of my favorite angles of the tank. Uh, thanks a lot, guys, for watching it. If you made it this far, uh, I'm sure a few brave souls will make it out uh, through the whole thing. Uh, coming up next, despite me having some second thoughts, uh, here are the outtakes. Back next weekend, but the nights sure are getting lonely around here in the meantime. Ah, uh, but the nights are getting lonely around here in the meantime.